The microphone three. For what purpose do you rise, sir? To speak in favor of the committee's recommendation. Please, sir, please go ahead. T.E. Brant Bosserman, Pacific Northwest Presbytery. Brothers, in so much of this conversation, uh, I'm left wondering if we're talking about a mere formality or a divine ordinance. The crux issue here is whether or not we believe that oaths called down God's almighty providence to bless our courts. A biblical doctrine of oaths would leave us understanding, as the Westminster Confession says, that there is a twofold function in every oath. The oath taker, first of all, calls down divine judgment should he lie, and he invites a burden of conscience unlike any other that can be created by human resolve or mere man-made ethical systems. It is necessary in a world smitten by sin to call down consequences should we lie. Not one of you would advise a man to enter into a contract with another man who believed there were no consequences for his actions should he break that contract. This is exactly what we would be inviting into our church, people to testify without consequences. The second function of an oath is to call down divine help, asking the Almighty God to bear witness with our witness, directing it to truth like an arrow to a target. This means it's appropriate, it's necessary for us to promise to tell the truth, so help me God. We have every reason to believe, like Solomon said in 1 Chronicles 6.23, that when an oath is sworn and the divine name is invoked, he will give attention to his name and sooner unravel a false witness before the eyes of the court than let it sit in that room and undermine the name in which it is sworn. When Jonathan extracts an oath from his father Saul not to kill David, he gets more than mere words. Conspicuously, that father goes about trying to kill David for the rest of that book, and divine providence works against him at every turn so that his, that oath in his name would be true. When the Mosaic Covenant is inaugurated, we have a threefold oath to do all that God commands of Israel. And despite 15 centuries of effort to break that oath, the living God says, I will turn your heart to me and cause you to do what you oathed to do. And at the heart of that promise, we have the living Lord Jesus Christ given to us, doing what only God could and only man should, fulfilling the law and all righteousness. The entire Bible is about the divine accomplishment through an oath taken where God's name is sworn. The Minority Report makes much of the fact that non-Christian theists are allowed to swear in God's name and testify. He thinks that's a, a peculiarity. Yes, we ought not to invoke God's name in ignorance, but it does not mean that when God's name is invoked in ignorance, he is at all slow to honor his name and to respond to it. That is why that oath is allowed in our courts, and appropriately so. Hebrews 6.16 says it's a matter of natural law that men swear by one greater than themselves. Ironically, this overture would have us as a church contradicting Jesus Christ our Lord himself on the Sermon on the Mount, who told us in no uncertain terms, we are never to swear by anything less than the almighty name of God, and offers an alternative form of oath even allowing people perhaps to swear on their own heads or in some other form or fashion. This thing ought not to be allowed. Our confession says that oaths are for matters of weight and moment. My question for you, brothers, is whether the matters before our courts are of weight and moment. If they are, then they warrant an oath to be sworn by all participants. Or tell me this, is our confession simply wrong, and why does this overture not overture an alteration in our confession as opposed merely to the BCO? It's been suggested me to me that by allowing atheists to testify in our courts, we could be more evangelistic and convey our care and concern for those who might be overlooked. I understand the principle here, give the people what they want, and Jesus perhaps might seem more attractive. But tell me why it has not been contemplated as evangelistic for a court to say, contrary to the minority report, we do not trust ourselves and our investigative powers alone. 
Rather, friend, what we need is for every participant in this court to invoke the name of the Almighty so that he will direct testimonies to truth and our judgments to its proper end. In fact, that's all we've got is the Almighty God. And in fact, I suppose the reason why you're here as opposed to a civil court is because he's all you got. And our hope is that you would pray for that Lord to help you believe even in this bout and battle of unbelief. This, my brothers, I submit, would be a faithful stance for the Presbyterian Church in America to take, to stand on the wisdom that has been gleaned in our confession that is no mere man-made tradition, that is appealed through and through to the biblical scriptures, the Word of God. This might be one of our unique blessings as Presbyterians. Thank you, sir. Time has expired. Microphone eight, for what purpose do you rise, sir?